So good evening and welcome back to Excelsior Academy. Now we are going to continue with the Lodi summary series, biomembrane and the cell architecture. So in the previous lecture, we talked about the membrane consistency, where we talked about the fluid-like uh, fluid -like consistency and gel-like consistency of the plasma membrane because of saturated and unsaturated fatty acid. Okay, now we are going to see the membrane consistency because of the cholesterol. So role of cholesterol in maintaining the membrane fluidity. So till now we talked about only phospholipids of saturated and unsaturated. Today about the cholesterol. Now we know that in the plasma membrane, cholesterol is intercalated or inserted among the phospholipids. So if you see the structure of phospholipids like this, you have got your phospholipids present on the outer and inner. Okay. Now in between, here, here, there, you have got your cholesterol. Okay. Now, so these cholesterol restricts the random movement of phospholipid. Now, how it is restricting? If you have got phospholipid like this and cholesterol is attached to this like this. So what will happen? So wherever the cholesterol is present being attached to the phospholipid, it cannot undergo rotation, it cannot laterally move as we have discussed in the earlier lectures, right? So, it is restricting the random movement of phospholipids. Now, at the usual cholesterol concentration, the interaction of this steroid ring with the long hydrophobic tails of phospholipids tend to immobilize these lipids and thus decrease the membrane fluidity. So, the interaction of cholesterol with the hydrophobic tails of the phospholipid, it is decreasing the membrane fluidity. Okay. Now, at lower concentrations, however, the steroid ring separates and disperses phospholipid tails, causing the inner regions of the membrane to become slightly more fluid. Okay. So, once we see the images, it becomes more clear. Now, see it over here. So, if suppose you have got PC over here, you can see that there is no cholesterol and you can see the width of the phospholipid. Okay, So, it is making the hydrophobic core as 3.5 nanometer. Are you getting this? Can, are you able to imagine? So, it means if I have PC over here like this, the width is going to be around 3.5 nanometer. Okay. Now, a pure sphingomyelin bilayer is thicker than one formed from the phosphoglyceride such as PC. So what they're saying is that if I had sphingolipids, for example, sphingomyelin, the plasma membrane is going to be more thicker as compared to the plasma membrane of the normal cell. Okay. So you can see over here that see on the plasma membrane, cellular plasma membrane is there. Your, suppose this is your cell, this is a plasma membrane. So thickness is around 3.5 nanometer. Okay. Now, if you have another where you got both PC and cholesterol, so what is happening? The thickness is getting increased. Okay. So from 3.5, it has become 4.0 nanometer. So cholesterol has a lipid ordering effect on phosphoglyceride bilayers that increase their thickness. Okay. Now, whereas in the case of sphingomyelin, now where do you see the sphingomyelin? Mainly in the brain tissues, okay, and heart tissues. So, when cholesterol is interacting with the sphingomyelin, there is no as such increase in the thickness, but it itself is more thicker and wider. So, it is around 4.6 to 5.6 nanometer, okay. So, the cholesterol does not affect the thickness of the more ordered sphingomyelin bilayer. So, what, what we are understanding from here, if phospholipids is interacting with the cholesterol, the thickness of the membrane is increasing. Okay? Is it clear? I repeat once again. So, whenever cholesterol is there, plus phosphoglycerides like your PC, phospho, phosphatidylcholine, the thickness is increasing of the plasma membrane. Okay, it increases. Stop me in between wherever you are not following. Okay. 
Now, bilayer curvature. So till now, what we have discussed is how membrane uh, phospholipids are able to move laterally, rotationally. Okay. And uh, now about the fluidity of the membranes, wherein which we discuss about the uh, saturated, unsaturated, the role of cholesterol. Now, this is one more factor of the plasma membrane, which is deciding the uh, structure and the functions of the plasma membrane. It is called the bilayer curvature. Now, this is very important. Please listen carefully. So, it depends on the relative size of the polar head groups and non-polar tail of its constituent phospholipids. So, what they are talking about? They are talking about the polar head as well as the tail. Okay. Now, lipids with long tail, large head groups are cylindrical. For example, PC. Can you see the figure over here? So, in the figure, you can see that they have got the large head, polar head. Now, why this is? Because of the group choline, which is attached to the phosphate. And they have also, and they also have long tails. Okay. So, their saturated fatty acid chains are also long. So, because of this, what will happen? The shape of the plasma membrane is going to be flat, like this. Okay. So, it is going to be flat. Now, if you have got, if, uh, sorry, huh, if you have got such cases where small heads are there and the unsaturated fatty acid chains are there, then it becomes the, then it takes the shape of the curve. Okay. And it forms like this. Can you see the difference? Over here, it is flat and here it starts taking the curve form. So, they have got the smaller head group such as PE and takes the conical shape of the plasma membrane. So, can you remember? So, PC means if more amount of phosphatidyl choline is present, then it is taking the flat shape. More amount of PE is present, that is phosphatidyl ethanolamine, then it is taking the conical shape. Okay. Now, what is the advantage of having such difference in the phosphoglycerides. So, in this case, what happens is that, <clears throat> see, when you have over here more of PC, the membrane is going straight, correct? Now, the moment amount of PE increase, you can see it is taking the conical shape over here. So, there is a curvature. Now, all these are important while a cell is moving, this curvature, the shape is important wherever it is functioning. For example, like cell movement is there, okay? The cell movement, it's like your, it is going to move like this. So every time the plasma membrane needs to change its curvature, it cannot just go like this straight, right? Then whenever there is process of endocytosis or exocytosis, or vesicle formation. So whenever such process are going on, this curvature is needed because whenever vesicles are forming, so what is happening? So it will start bulging out. Now to bulge out, you need PE amount of phospholipid concentration high so that it helps in the membrane formation. I'll just show you with simple diagram over here. So you have got the membrane. Suppose it is undergoing endocytosis. What happens? It is going to bind to the receptor over here. Okay. Then it gives the signal that the cell should undergo endocytosis. So what will happen? It will start making bulges like this. Correct. And then this will join and all these membranes will form a vesicle. Now this vesicle will go and combine with the lysosome or other, uh, some other organelles and forms the internal compartments okay so so far so good it is clear yes yes ma'am okay now so membrane lipids are usually distributed unequally so this already we have discussed so the here they are talking about so what is the unequal distribution i have already mentioned so, Rinki, what is the answer in the outer ring? Ma'am, you are not audible. Okay, one second. 
now am i audible yes ma'am ha ah. so i have already mentioned that there is a plasma membrane unequal distribution of the phospholipids so i know that in outer two phospholipids are there in inner three phospholipids are rich so what are those in the outer maima in the outer what are those phospholipids which are rich non pc and sphingomas pc and sphingomas yes sphingolipids okay so the remainings are in the inner that is your pi pe and ps okay good so in a inequality is due to its susceptibility to hydrolysis by phospholipases so this is what we explained during the doubt sessions so these are the enzymes that cleaves various bonds in the hydrophilic ends of the phospholipids so now we are going to study about the phospholipase and there are many isoforms of phospholipase so what do you mean by isoforms they do the similar functions okay but there is a difference in their amino acid sequences now phospholipids in the cytosolic leaflet are resistant to hydrolysis by phospholipases so what will happen see if this is your cell and it is present over here okay now the phospholipids in the cytosolic leaflet yani ki inside ones this inside ones are resistant to the action of phospholipase because the enzyme is present outside it cannot go inside and cleave the inside ones phospholipids so whatever is present on the outside it can actually cleave okay ma'am please repeat this okay so see this is your cell okay and let us say this it has got the plasma membrane outer membrane and inner okay now it is saying that cytosolic leaflet are resistant it means what this side inner side correct inner side is resistant to phospholipases and phospholipases are present outside in the external media now it cannot cross the plasma membrane okay this enzyme cannot cross the plasma membrane hence the inside phospholipids are resistant only which are present on the outside on the outer membrane that is your pc and sphingolipids will undergo the action of phospholipases are you getting the point since they are present on the outside so whenever phospholipase is there it can act either on pc or sphingolipids since phospholipase cannot enter the cell okay now you are not audible so now the phospholipase has got so there are different isoforms are there as i mentioned so now this is what you need to remember so you have got phospholipase a1 a2 c and d okay so there are four phospholipases are there and each type of phospholipase cleaves one of the susceptible bonds which are shown in the red so can you see phospholipase a1 over here a2 here c here and d over here okay now this is your group glycerol group is there now in intact cells only phospholipids in the exoplasmic leaflet that is outside okay can be cleaved by the phospholipase now phospholipase c is your cytosolic enzyme so till now what we were talking about it was all your external media present phospholipase this is your inside the cell this enzyme is present okay phospholipase c which is also represented in all the textbook as plc it is involved in many cell signaling also okay it cleaves the certain phospholipids in the cytosolic leaflet of the plasma membrane so this is something you need to practice and remember so you have got phospholipase c now just look at where it is present so you have got 1 2 3 glycerol moiety is there so we know that to this your fatty acyl chains are attached okay so two chains are attached and to the third one it's always your phosphate group okay now it breaks your ester bond over here 
so phosphase phospholipase c breaks over here okay then after p it is your phospholipase d now the action of phospholipase a1 and a2 is where at the bond which is attached to your fatty acyl chains so this is your bond okay the ester bond clear phospholipase a1 and a2 so a1 on the first carbon of glycerol cleaving the hydrophobic chains and phospholipase a2 at the second carbon atom of glycerol cleaving the second hydrocarbon chains then phospholipase c is at the phosphate group d is after the phosphate group okay which is going to make the bond with the some side chains now for more clarity this r group is where you can have your choline ethanol i mean inositol or serine group okay so this will help in understanding where exactly the phospholipase d is acting please remember this is important one okay so this one is which we have already discussed the movement of the phospholipids so we know that rotationally it is possible lateral movement is possible and the flip flop is possible so you can see this structure over here of flippase floppase and scramblase okay so you can see flippase is coming under p type atpase now what do you mean by p type atpase so we have got atpases of three type p f and v type okay so this will will be covering don't worry in detail that too in msc in detail you have to study p type means it is because of the analog called vanadate phosphate analog is a vanadate which inhibits your p type atpases then f type is there where you have got your atp synthase v type which are present on the vacuoles so v for vacuoles okay don't worry we'll cover in detail then so p flippase is a p type atpase it moves pe and ps from outer to cytosolic leaflet so we know that phosphatidyl ethyl ethanolamine and serine are present on the inner side so why chance a while Uh, while transferring the phospholipids from golgi and uh, endoplasmic reticulum if it is present on the outer membrane so it is the function of flippase to bring both pe as well as ps into the inner inner leaflet of the plasma membrane then next is the floppase it is the abc transporter now what is abc abc stands for atp binding cassette okay so this is also there when we talk about the membrane transport proteins they are all your transmembrane proteins having the tetra domain structure okay so they move phospholipids from cytosolic to the outer so from this region to this region from inner part of your inner leaflet of the plasma membrane to the outer leaflet okay now coming to the scramblase so what does the scramblase does it moves lipids in either direction towards the equilibrium okay so what is the equilibrium maintain that we should have high composition of pc and sphingolipid on the outer and uh, ps pe pi in the inner leaflet of the plasma membrane okay now lipid drafts this is also very important and uh, yes and questions have come many times from the lipid drafts also related to cholera toxin so we'll be completing that today so what is lipid drafts actually so they found that why uh, uh, they have found that when they were extracting the plasma membrane of the cells they found that every time certain patches of phospholipids were remaining okay and when they analyze these patches are always bound together and are rich in cholesterol and sphingomyelin okay so that is on the plasma membrane you can see these patches like this 
So these patches are present, which is rich in cholesterol and the sphingolipids. Along with these cholesterol and sphingolipids, they also have the in, uh, receptors. Protein receptors are present. So every time, whenever they were extracting the plasma membrane, these patches are coming together only, and you're not able to, you know, separate them out. So, but later they found that it can be disrupted using methyl cyclodextrin. Please remember, so it's a detergent. Methyl cyclodextrin, which depletes the membranes, cholesterol, and you can also use antibiotics called philippin. So, what are the methods by which you can destroy or disrupts the lipids? It is the methyl cyclodextrin and the antibiotics called philippin. Okay, so what does philippin does? It takes and covers all the cholesterol. Lipid drugs are rich in cholesterol and sphingolipids as well as many signaling proteins which are acting as a receptors. It will be more clear once you see the images actually. Okay, so if suppose this is your plasma membrane, you can see that those patches are present. Okay. Now, if you see these patches, they are called the lipid drafts and they are rich in cholesterol, sphingomyelin and they also have glycolipids which act as the receptors or glycoproteins acting as the receptors. Okay, so far so good. I hope this is clear. Okay, now coming to this portion. So, this is just the animation which shows that the lipid drafts always move together only. So, even though when we talk about the phospholipids, single phospholipid will be moving. So, that's why because of this movement, it always looks as if it is fluid-like conditions. Now, in the case of lipid drafts, you can see that this purple color thing, it's always moving together. And if you see in the figures also, the others are actually carrying the receptors also. If you see over here, these ones, they carry the receptors also. So along with the rafts. Now, this is one example like by which they came to know about the lipid rafts. So those are nothing but the cholera toxin. So what they have found is how exactly the cholera toxin is causing diarrhea in the patients. So the cholera toxin has got the receptor which goes and binds to the GM1 which are present on the lipid draft of the human plasma cell, plasma membrane surface. Okay, I repeat, the cholera toxin is able to bind to the glycosphingolipid called GM1. Okay, now, so it is able to bind over here. Then this interaction brings all the receptors together and they become the different, different small patches. They come together and get the cluster. Now, once they form this interaction, the toxin goes inside the cell and it causes the, it actually disrupts your sodium potassium, uh, sodium potassium channel. So because of which you lose your sodium, you lose your glucose and then diarrhea is happening. And because of dehydration, the person dies. Okay. So they made use of this cholera toxin. Now, how they were able to do this thing? By attaching the fluorescent antibody to the cholera toxin. Now, if you see over here, the images, so you can see over here, the patches are different, different over here. So once the antibody was added, okay, the antibody against the cholera toxin was added, fluorescently labeled, then they saw that they got the separation over here. Okay, so you can see that whatever the green color, dark, green colors are present here and there it got clustered in one area okay so so the results of biochemical studies suggested that gm1 a glycosphingolipid and placenta alkaline phosphatase it is a lipid anchoring anchored membrane protein they are present into the lipid drafts and then you have got the transferrin receptor which traverses the entire membrane okay now, to locate these components in the intact plasma membrane, cells were treated with fluorescence labeled cholera toxin, which crosslinks with these molecules and then a, they interact. Are you getting the picture over here? See, lipid drafts are there. For example, this lipid draft, which gets interacted with the cholera toxin, have got the receptor called GM1, P lab, and your 
uh, transferring okay these receptors so whenever cholera toxin is coming in this case in the lab they have tagged the cholera toxin with the antibodies green fluorescent antibodies so now what will happen is when cholera toxin is coming it is interacting with the gm1 p lab and the transferring because of this interaction wherever the patches were present they come together okay these patches means these rafts were present they come together and that's why they saw that after some time the fluorescence is co-centralized that is at the center it is present okay now it is clear now there are two types of lipid rafts so one is cavulin the another one is non cavular so non cavular means it is going to be flat what we have seen till now in the animation also as well as when i was teaching so if you have the plasma membrane like this your non cavular patches will be flat like this whereas cavulin means it is going to have the invaginations on the plasma membrane okay so they are the subsets of the lipid rafts okay now they actually form the invaginations over here they are formed by the oligomers of the membrane protein called cavulin which interacts with the protein called cavin this is very 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 important so what happens is if suppose this is your plasma membrane cavulin and cavin they interact together and go and bind at the bottom of the inner leaflet of your plasma membrane like this now with the help of the atp they start actually contracting your plasma membranes which results in the invagination formation on the plasma membrane so from here your plasma membrane starts becoming like this so cavulin also interacts with cholesterol so this is what they have shown interaction with the cholesterol for the formation of the cavulin mainly seen in the ha ah, yes ma'am can you repeat it okay so what over here is happening is see <clears throat> i can share it over here see you have got the lipid rafts okay so lipid rafts already as we have seen you have got the flat ones where you can see the more concentration of cholesterol and sphingolipids over here you can see cholesterol and sphingolipids are there the second category is called cavulin now how this is formed is you have got the plasma membrane okay then there is a protein called cavulin which interacts with your cavin protein okay so these two interacting proteins goes and bind to they go and bind to your inner leaflet of your plasma membrane like this then what is happening then they start actually they start actually pulling you are not audible so they start actually pulling so see it was like this okay then they start pulling the plasma membrane so what will happen if your plasma membrane was flat they start pulling and it starts becoming like a invaginations okay so it will form something like this after that what happens is it will pinch off pinch off means here the plasma membrane will attach and here it will attach so finally these vesicles they are formed or sometimes they remain over there itself on the plasma membrane they will be remaining like this only so so many invaginations will be there okay okay ma'am ha so okay so where do you where do we see all this thing so these are required in the endothelial cells and adipocytes where do you find endothelial cells and adipocytes where do you find adipocytes what are adipocytes they are your fat cells fat tissue ha correct fat tissues and what about endothelial cells they are found in your blood vessels okay so your blood vessels are made up of endothelial cells 
so now these in see you can see over here so many invaginations are there okay so this also helps in increasing the surface area of the plasma membrane now it is involved in many cellular activities like endocytosis signaling regulation of lipid transport and protection of the plasma membrane against the mechanical stress okay so it act like a cushion yes now this is the uh, i guess the last topic for today so this is what i was talking about the cholera toxin so about the cholera toxin it consists of membrane binding domain ctxb which goes and binds to the five copies of the receptor which are present on the host cell so of what five copies it is talking about this gm1 p lap and the which are present on the rap so they come together when cholera toxin is binding to this gm1 and they get clustered now once this cluster is formed it goes inside and dysregulates the r sodium potassium pumps and all so that it causes the uh, uh, loss of water along with that the osmolytes like na plus cl minus has been loose so because of which it causes the diarrhea okay yeah so thank you for today i have prepared only this much for today's class